Okay, Hunter Biden. This stuff keeps coming out and it keeps not being covered. There's, that's the recurring theme. More and more evidence, more and more damning evidence, the more it gets pushed down as we're four days out from the election. But we've learned he is a target of an FBI money laundering investigation. That's been confirmed. That he's taken $1 million from Patrick Ho, who's an alleged Chinese spy. So the Ho part works. He traveled with his father in 2013 to China. And the purpose of the trip for Joe Biden, Vice President Joe Biden at the time, was to pressure the Chinese government to stop their crazy amount of intellectual property theft and then also slow their efforts in the in the south china seas if you remember all that south china sea stuff still going on but that was the point go be america be tough peace through strength hey you can't do this we're telling you to stop it we'll work with you on other stuff but stop it it's pretty it, you, it's pretty easy to push that stuff down when you're america at least it should be but again obama and biden were so damn apologetic for how awesome America is that they didn't do that. So it could have been a great result for the region, bringing a little bit more stability there, taking away the pressure and the angst from the South China Sea debacle. Could have helped with the IP theft. Instead, it was just a win for the Bidens. America lost, the region lost. China and the Bidens turned out to be just fine. They, China increased their intellectual property theft afterwards. Didn't change a damn thing in the South China Sea. And interestingly, Hunter walked away with a $1.5 billion investment deal. So again, Joe Biden could give two shits about America and Americans. He doesn't care about you. It's all about himself, Jill, his family, period. I get loving your family, but doing so at the expense of the rest of the country, especially when you are in a power of a position of power and influence is absolutely ridiculous. And despite all this credible information coming out, this is, you can see the tweet on the screen if you're watching, this is a tweet from NBC which says, a 64 page document asserting an elaborate conspiracy theory involving Joe Biden's son and business in China that was later disseminated by close associates of President Trump appears to be the work of, fake, of a fake intelligence firm. So they are just pushing it down, forget this is happening, calling it fake like so many have, despite the fact that there are countless sources saying it's real, including a Biden in insider and, and Tony Bobulinski, including the U.S. intelligence community, who is saying this is not disinformation. There are active investigations going for elements of this. But the you know NBC and the mainstream media, they know that because they are all collectively on the same page with this, including big tech, who we talked about this week, yesterday, in fact, and all of these news channels who hate the president and want to fundamentally change America, they know that if they just say something like this, which can later be proved wrong and they can say mea culpa, they won't, but it helps get their man in office. And I say their man, they don't actually want Joe Biden in office. They don't just want, they just don't want President Trump. So they're pushing this out there to their millions upon millions of followers, viewers, etc with the hopes that they will buy it hook, line, and sinker, like they always do. It's absolutely ridiculous that no one will just say, okay, let's talk about this. Let's talk about it. Just explain, how do you, how do you come to the conclusion that it's a, it's a disinformation campaign by an intelligence firm? How do you come to the conclusion that it's this, that, or the other? This is this is simple stuff, guys. This is simple human stuff, but they can't because it's so damning. So the only thing they can do is rely on lies that they then leverage and push further out into society and out to the masses with the mainstream media and, and big tech social media. Because if everyone's saying it, it's got to be true, right? That's their mindset. And they get away with it because... Everyone saying it is all of them because there's not enough of us who are pushing back. And the ones of us who are, are getting suppressed. They're getting, they're down five, seven million views. They're down this, they're down like, this thing is stacked so hardly against us. Washington Post uh, writer Dana Hillman, I think it is, 
tweeted out, slammed Fox News' Brett Barry. And of course, you've had the evening folks covering this and asking questions. It's just the fair thing to do. Again, if there's something that refutes any of this, it doesn't look like there is, then, then provide that. But Brett Baer had covered it and brought it up during the day. This was Dana Hillman's tweet and then, and then Brett's response. She said, sad to hear at Brett Baer, whose journalistic integrity I respected, desperately hawking the latest Hunter Biden trash tonight. So she's mad that someone's bringing it up because, of course, Washington Post is as liberal as they come. He responded in kind, Dana, we are covering a story, not hawking anything. The business partner said what he said. He said he met with Joe Biden. Joe Biden said he didn't and knew nothing of Hunter's business deals. Is it not OK to ask questions anymore? Should the New York Post be locked out of Twitter? Question mark. And of course, the New York Post still is locked out of Twitter. And this whole thing feels like we are in an alternate universe. And his point is fair. And again, most of the folks during the day, Brett included, Brett's, uh, you know, I think Brett's re relatively fair and, and a decent guy. It's, it's logical to ask, Don Lemon and Chris Cuomo should be asking the same questions. Wolf Blitzer should be asking the same questions. Rachel Maddow, Joe Scarborough, all these people who hate America. Keith Olbermann's lost. Like, just forget about him. Like, he hates himself. But those other people should be saying, all right, I'm, I'm curious about this. No one seems to talk about it, which should, should alert you to something. And there's a lot of damning evidence, and there's literally video evidence of Joe Biden saying numerous times, I have no idea what's going on with that. I've never met with them, never been in communication about it. And then plenty of evidence pointing to the contrary. It should at minimum bring up questions. It's okay to ask questions. And I say this all the time, if, if it was flipped around and it was against... You know, it's harder to believe these days because of all the hoaxes and scandals we've seen. But if it's against a conservative, the same thing should be done. Vet it out. Figure it out. But you're never going to get that because the mainstream media is not fair. The press isn't fair. They're not going to cover it in a fair manner. So people aren't ever going to get the right information to decide on. But the, the fact remains, being able to ask a question is a basic thing. It's ridiculous that people are being slammed for just having you know, opposite of what of what Hillman says, their journalistic integrity and asking a fair question. And then get a get a response. And the response can't be that's a smear campaign. I'm not talking about it. The only proper way to adjust your set. Yeah. Underwear for men. Set them once and done for all day comfort.